as the person without that first mover advantage, you're always on the defense. You're always defending yourself. That's going to significantly impact the, the the party took off with the child. You don't know where they're at and you're, you're waiting to get to court to be able to see them. That's going to impact your mental health because they had the first mover advantage. You're going to go to them and you tell them 13% of your workforce is going through a child custody dispute and no one going through a child custody dispute is going to be able to give 100% at anything they do. So what did your, your research tell you about? Do you look into productivity, how that impacts corporations? Absolutely. So there's the way the model is, the independent variable is <clears throat> whether or not somebody had been in a child custody dispute. Now that's hard to measure on a, on a, on a binary variable. So I had to throw a third metric in there. And so what I did is I measured, um, people that were indirectly exposed to the child custody dispute. So new girlfriends, uh, grandparents, you know, things like that. So they're one removed. So they're, they're within proximity. And then you also have the people that have, they've never been involved in a child custody dispute and they've never been close to anybody that's been through one. Right. So we've got a bit of a scale there now. So you take that and then, okay, what's the impact of mental and emotional health? And I used a validated scale for that. I used uh, Goldberg's 12 question uh, questionnaire on general health questionnaire. That's a mediator. The impact of mental and emotional health. Now there's a lot of different roads I can go down to with this, but I had to keep it within scope. That mental and emotional health acts as a mediator and impacts the dependent variable, which is employee productivity, which I also used a validated scale. A, um, I think it was a 17 item uh, employee performance self-report. Now I used a self-report um, because I know when I was going through my thing, if my employer asked me, hey, are you slacking off at work? Are you you know, doing this? I'm going to be like, nope, absolutely not. Because I am i can't lose my job. I got to pay my attorney. I got to pay my bills, right? So you use a self-report because they're a lot more likely to give you uh, personal information that they might not give otherwise. Now, this is where the real measure was, is the uh, moderators. So between the independent variable of whether or not they've been in a child custody dispute and the mental and emotional health, I measured moderators. I actually have my my model up here in front of me. So let me list them off for you. And I did control for age, gender, race, ethnicity, income, education, employment, all that kind of stuff. And there's a really interesting list of factors when you start putting in combination of things. Because we're ne not just one of those things, right? Moderators that I measured is uh, whether or not being the petitioner respondent has a moderating effect on mental and emotional health. And overwhelmingly, yes, it does. Hey, Mark, what's the, what percentage of the time is the father the respondent? Uh, it's somewhere between 70 and 80 in divorces. Right. Last I heard it was like 79.9 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the respond, uh, uh, respondents have a significantly higher impact to their emotional health or a negative impact, I'll say. So they're, they're significantly more impacted. You know, uh, and as they were talking earlier, having that first mover advantage as the person without that first mover advantage, you're always on the defense. You're always defending yourself. That's going to significantly impact the, the other party took off with the child. You don't know where they're at and you're, you're waiting to get to court to be able to see them. That's going to impact your mental health because they had the first mover advantage. The, uh, the second one is um, whether or not time sharing determination was agreed upon by both parties or ordered by a judge has a, an, an impact to mental emotional health. It does overall, but not, not between the two. And then whether or not you were the custodial parent, if that has an impact and whether or not you were married to the other party. Now, the thing is, is those last three, if you start taking combinations of those, you get some really, really interesting stuff. And in my defense of the dissertation, they asked me, well, why didn't you do this? And I was like, well, because we only had a limited amount of time to really get in and, and analyze it, but it is set for future research. One question that I had in there that I asked all three of the, the different groups within the independent variable, those directly affected by a custody, uh, child custody dispute, those indirectly affected by a child custody dispute, and those not ever exposed to a child custody dispute, they were all within 1% of each other on how much a person would be affected throughout their work day or work week if they were involved in a child custody dispute at 55%. So you take that, you know, through the other statistics that we walked through earlier, we're looking at a employee productivity loss of near 9 
hundred billion dollars nationwide. And that's just the US. Now, this isn't just a US issue. This is a worldwide issue. So some of the remedies are, okay, change where the campaign dollars go and start incorporating, uh, whether it be co-parenting counseling, uh, mental health, more mental health stuff, you know, reduced legal services into employee assistance program. Now this is all, you know, 10,000 foot view, just as, so people can put this into perspective and see how it hits home. Uh, you know, if you work for a 10,000 person organization, they're looking at an impact or a productivity loss of $72 million a year. You think that's significant to them? Yeah. What's going on, guys? It is Mark Real Jr., the father's rights attorney. And on August 7th, I am releasing my first book, The Father's Rights Playbook. My introduction to family law was my own family law case um, and going through the family court system. And in doing that, my eyes were open to the injustices that occur and the trials and tribulations that fathers are put through. So. It was a personal experience, and then my eyes were open to this broad systemic issue, which has inspired me to build this firm and now write this book.